Today we're gonna to be talking about extracorporeal shockwave therapy or ESWT for plantar fasciitis or for heel pain, but you can use these machines for all sorts of other soft tissue ailments. And you won't believe this, but you can actually buy these for your home now. They're cheap enough that you can just order one on Amazon or on AliExpress. And the reason that that is crazy is that you used to have to spend a lot of money to get this done. Even today, these machines cost 50 or $60,000 dollars and about 10 years ago they cost a hundred thousand dollars and I actually had to leave the country to get this therapy in Canada because at the time it would have cost thirty thousand dollars for me to do that here in America but in Canada it only cost a few thousand dollars but now you can buy one of these and do it a million times on your own and the prices of these things are super cheap now even though a lot of doctors buy these machines for fifty or sixty thousand dollars today these ones work just as well well. But today I'm going to show you how to use one and the main difference between all of these models. And then we're going to set up a fancy one. This one costs more than these, but this one you can buy on Amazon. It is $12,000, but I want to see if there's any difference between this and the cheaper one you can buy on AliExpress for a few grand. Because if not, you should just get this because this one works great. Now for plantar fasciitis, there's two different types of shockwave machines available. First off, there is radial shockwave, and the applicator head looks like this. These are cheap and easy to find. Now, unfortunately, in the studies, it shows that for plantar fasciitis, these are not effective. But a lot of people buy them thinking, oh, I got a shockwave machine. It was only $1,000. I'm good to go. But unfortunately, this does not reach the plantar fascia. It doesn't go deep enough. The waves go out like this. It's not focused. On a focused shockwave machine, there's an applicator head with water inside, and this directs the pressure waves to a specific depth so it can actually reach the plantar fascia. And that's been shown in the literature. This is much more effective than the radial shockwave. Now the radial shockwave can be used for a superficial injury that's not healing, like a skin wound, and it also acts like a massager. It feels pretty cool. But this is ineffective for plantar fasciitis, so keep that in mind. Even though this is $1,000 and you want to buy it, you can buy them everywhere, this is not going to be effective for plantar fasciitis. Now these two machines are very different when you set them up. When it comes to radial shockwave, you just put some ultrasound gel on the applicator head, turn it on, select a body part, press the start button, it will make a bunch of noise. And then this button starts the treatment. And then you can put this on a body part and it will massage it pretty much. Now let's compare it to a focus shockwave machine. So first off, there's a bladder on this cone and it has water inside. So before you turn these ones on, you have to fill it with water. It's also part of the cooling system. For this machine, you fill it with this one and any excess comes out of this one. You stick these in the back and you fill it with water. Do not try to start these machines until it's filled with water. Anybody can do it and it takes a few minutes. Next, you wanna unlock the screen. On this model, it's 88888 and then it turns on, then you press body. Now the interface could use some work, but it's pretty simple. You have a list of different body parts you wanna work on, and right here we have plantar fasciitis, so click it. And then there's no enter or select button, you actually have to go to therapy, and now it will be set to plantar fasciitis. Now when you fill it with water, there might be air bubbles, so you actually have to press these little arrows and fill up the head with water, and then pull water from it until it does that until you see no more air bubbles. Now this screen has all the useful information. So we have the intensity, the frequency, and the shock waves. You cannot change the intensity on the screen. You have to use this plus and minus on the applicator. And this makes the total energy going into the tissue increase or decrease, but it will increase the pain. So you actually have to mess with this setting until you find the perfect amount of pain that you can tolerate during treatment. Next, the frequency cannot be changed for this body part. If you want this to be three hertz or something else, you have to select a different body part, but for plantar fasciitis, it recommends four hertz. Next, shock waves. Typically, you wanna do 1,000. Then press OK, and then it will set 1,000. When you're doing treatments, you can do 2,000 or 3,000, but it depends on how far along you are with your treatment. If you're first starting out and you have a lot of pain with your plantar fasciitis, you should set this to 200 to 600 and start with that first. After a few treatment sessions, you can easily up this to 1,000 or 3,000. And then press OK. 
Next, there's an up and down arrow for the depth of the shock waves. So when it's like this and it's really flat, that means it's gonna go really deep in the tissue. Now, when you press the up arrow, it will expand. And when it looks like this, it will be more superficial shock waves. Now for plantar fasciitis, you wanna mess with the depth settings. You want it right in the middle for the first few treatments. So I'm gonna press the down arrow. And that looks pretty good. That's what I would start with. Now to start the machine, you wanna press the play button and then it will start making some noises. And then we press this button to turn on the shock waves. And now it's working. Now you need some ultrasound gel in a towel. Now if you put your machine on a table, you can do the treatment on the floor next to it. That's the easiest way I found. That way you can access the screen if it turns off because you've already reached the limit of shocks. Now take your foot, put some ultrasound gel on it, just a pea-sized amount right on your heel, then turn on the machine with the main power button and then put it right on your foot. And it will probably hurt a lot, but you can change the intensity with this positive and negative here on the handle. So if it's too much, press the negative and then put it back on your foot. Now, if you're not feeling anything, you're gonna have to change the depth and you can do that on the screen. So if you feel nothing when the applicator looks like this, you wanna press the down arrow just for a second or two and then try again. If you feel a lot of pain, you're probably right on the spot and it's doing its magic. You really wanna experiment with different angles with this applicator head. You wanna go all over the heel to find any spots that hurt and then hold it there. After a few sessions, it will hurt less and less and you wanna increase the intensity. For some of you, you might have pain right here in the arch and you'll wanna put the applicator right there instead. Now, wherever this thing goes, it needs to have ultrasound gel unless it will not work. Now, if it's your first treatment, you wanna do only a few hundred shocks and see how you feel. For the first few days, you're gonna feel a little bit sore, but that's totally normal. It will actually hurt to walk a little bit, but it's gonna cause lots of healing in this area. It causes new capillary beds, it causes growth factors, and it can even break apart calcified soft tissue if you have it in your shoulder or somewhere else. Now, I had plantar fasciitis on and off for years, but I fixed that a long time ago. But unfortunately, I damaged my ankle from a chiropractor. So my peroneal tendons and my deep flexor tendons have been a huge pain in the butt in the last few years and I fixed most of the issues but there's this nagging pain with my peroneal tendon and it doesn't show anything on the MRI so I've been hitting it with this and it feels fantastic it got super sore and it's doing its magic just like it did with the plantar fasciitis I love it but keep in mind that no matter how much healing power this can cause in your plantar fascia you need to fix the underlying causes of your plantar fasciitis such as being overweight having a bad diet or wearing bad shoes that mess up the circulation of the foot so the plantar fascia cannot feed itself, having weak foot muscles, having weak hip muscles, everything else, all the stuff that I've talked about in my other videos, you have to follow that. But this can be very useful if you have a case that keeps coming back and it's really frustrating and you fixed everything else, all your muscles are getting really strong, but there's still a nagging pain. Or you have calcified soft tissue, this thing is for you. So for me on my peroneals, I blast it right here on the side at every angle possible. And I've been increasing the intensity in the last few weeks and it's been feeling really good. But you could use this for all sorts of stuff. I have both of my shoulders done because I tore my labrums and I use this on there as well. It makes it nice and sore and then it starts feeling really good. If you have back pain, if you have knee pain, this thing works fantastic. You can reach lots of tissues with this thing. So it's very useful for some of you guys that have chronic pain. Personally, I'm hypermobile and I'm hyper susceptible for tendinopathies. So that's why I made this channel and the book and everything else is because I've dealt with pain for a long time. So anyways, that's how you use this thing. Let's move on. First, we're gonna turn it off. Actually, let me show you something. If you run out of shocks because you hit the limit, you can press play and then turn the on button and it will fire right back up again. If you wanna turn it off, you press the stop button right here and then you turn off the switch in the back and then it will turn off. Now it's time to open up the fancy one. So this one costs $5,000. This one costs $12,000. It's still much cheaper than a $60,000 one, and this one is supposed to be nicer than this one, but it might not be. 
This one might be better for most people, especially at the price. Also, I've used the heck out of this thing and it makes me just as sore as all the more expensive machines and I've tested every machine out there. I traveled far and wide to test them all out, the Richard Wolf one, the Ossetron, all of them. The piezoelectric form, the electrohydraulic, all of them. So I know how it feels and this one works great. But let's see if this one is any different. And even though this one is more expensive, you can buy it on Amazon. So if it doesn't work, you can return it. So first let's open it up. And the applicator has water inside, that's different. We have a main power cord. This looks like a grounding conductor. And this goes on the side of the machine so that it can hold the applicator. This is probably for refilling it with water. And then we have a manual. And be very careful when you lift it out, you don't wanna hurt it. This looks pretty fancy, let's fire it up. This one's surprisingly smaller than this one. So first we need to connect power. Now there's some bubbles in here and we do not want that. The best way to get rid of these is press the height plus and minus button and move this around until the bubbles disappear. So fill it with some water. Oh, we're getting some air. I think it needs to be filled with more water actually, because if bubbles are going into this, that means there's air in the machine. And here we go, you have to fill it with more water. So there's a water hose attachment at the bottom of the machine. Oh, there we go. Remove the plug, and then we stick it into a cup full of water. And usually these require distilled water, do not use tap water. So here's some distilled water, and we're gonna shove this inside, and then go to settings, and then plus, and it will fill itself up with water. And now it's sucking the water out of the cup. Wow, it needs more water. Here's cup number two. Oh, there we go, water tank filled. And if you wanna clean the water out, you press the negative. And now it's filling up the cup. The water's a little dirty, maybe I should clean this thing out. Let's fill it back up. So I'm gonna dump this water out and then fill it up with some more clean water. All right, now let's fill it up with some clean water. And then close it off with the cap. And now we wanna mess with the height until this bubble goes away. Ooh, lots of bubbles. Try to get that bubble out of there. Oh, the bubble's gone. Oh, we got more bubbles. There's still air in there. There we go, now it's working. No more bubbles. And it needs more water, so let's fill it up again. There we go. Now the display screen shows intensity, frequency, and impulses. So this is how much it hurts, this is how often it's hitting you, and the total number of shock waves hitting your body. And then you select a body part. So for plantar fasciitis, we're gonna press six, and it shows plantar fasciitis, but they misspelled it, unfortunately. And then we're gonna increase the height, until it looks about like this. And we have another air bubble. This machine is not as good as the cheaper one. That's pretty funny. So I'm gonna try to get rid of that real quick. Oh, there we go, we sucked the bubble out. It should be good now. No bubbles and it looks like this. This is a perfect setting for plantar fasciitis. Oh, there's no buttons on this applicator. So you have to do everything on the screen. If it hurts a lot, you're gonna have to touch it on the screen. I like the other one because the buttons are actually on this. So let's press start. Oh, look at that, it's on. All right, let's pause until we're actually in position. So again, we're gonna apply some ultrasound gel and try to get close to the machine so you can mess with the settings. Make sure the gel is everywhere on your foot. Lower the intensity and then press play. Ouch, this one is intense, <laughs> holy cow. Now after a few hundred shocks, it will numb up and it'll start feeling better and then you can increase the intensity. And mine's already feeling better, so I'm gonna increase it. And then just start moving it around the foot and try to do different angles. Now, if you don't feel pain, press the positive or negative to change the height so it changes the depth that the shock waves are penetrating. Like right now, I made it so full that I can't even feel it in my plantar fascia. So I'm gonna have to lower it and now I feel it. <laughs> Holy cow. Now, as you do more treatment sessions, you wanna change the height and try to hit every depth that you possibly can. And search around for pain. The more pain, the more you're hitting on the parts of the tissue that need it most. 
Now this one costs more than twice as much as this one, but honestly, I prefer the other one and this one arrived damaged. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to return this one. I'm gonna get a new one because I want multiple models here so I can test them. But not having the intensity button on this is a huge deal breaker for me and you can't even turn it on or off on this. With this one, I can sit on the floor and get pretty comfortable and then mess with it on the floor. On this one, I have to be next to the screen. Now we're gonna test it on my peronials where I actually have pain right now still sore from the last few sessions I do these sessions every few days it's incredible and I'm still a little sore from the last session so I'm not gonna go crazy yep that shockwave all right it's a very distinct feeling I've been hit by all the machines and you can always know when it's focused or not actually I think the other machine is more intense than this one <laughs> it hurts so bad you just have to go through it all right I'm just doing 500 that hurts I'll give it a week until I'm healed up and then I'll hit it again. Now, most people for plantar fasciitis need three to six treatments, sometimes more. Especially if you're older or you're unhealthy or you're overweight, you're gonna require a lot more work. Now, doing this treatment once a week is fantastic, but if you're still sore, give it a few days to rest. Now, after six or eight treatments, you wanna give it a month to rest to see how it feels. The healing process that this induces can take a little while to notice. It can take two or three months. Also, do do not take any ibuprofen or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or any type of steroids while you're doing these treatments. Now these machines are pretty safe. You can hit a nerve, you can hit tendon, ligaments, bone. You can, if there's a non-union for a fracture, you can actually hit it with this. There's even studies for nerve growth and all sorts of other stuff. So I don't think you can really hurt yourself. Just don't put it on your head. Don't put it on any susceptible areas for tumors, any type of malignant cancerous growth. And that's pretty much it. Again, consult your doctor. This is not medical advice, but it's really hard to screw, screw yourself up with these. They're pretty darn safe, especially if you're using it on your foot. It's gonna hurt, but it can get rid of the pain pretty well. Now, if you want either one of these machines, I'll have links down below. But again, for plantar fasciitis, you need focused ESWT, and those machines cost more. And as long as it has water in the head or small silicon cones on it, that means it's focused. Do not buy these ones for plantar fasciitis. There's still physical therapists and doctors that will charge you and tell you you're getting shockwave therapy, and then they'll give you this. That is ridiculous. This is not for plantar fasciitis. Now, if you know of a machine that's better or cheaper than these that does focus shockwave, please let me know below. Also, if you're a doctor and you can't afford 60 to $100,000 or those leasing options, just buy one of these. It works just as well. Now, I hope this video helps you. Please let me know what your thoughts are down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.